And we're joined now by Catherine McGregor, the CEO of NG. Welcome, Catherine. Good to have you with us. Now, our event is all about the critical milestones which must be met in the decade ahead for us to halve emissions by 2030. So what will be NG's contribution to this very important global mission? All right. Thank you very much for this such an important question. And uh, it's nice to be here and interacting with you. So really two sides for me to that question. The first thing is uh, what NG is doing itself and its own ambition for carbon neutrality. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And the second thing, which is very complementary, is what NG is doing for its customers. And I would go as far as saying for its society, for the society. So maybe on the first uh, angle, it's really around setting ambitious goals on carbon neutrality, which we have decided to reach by 2045, and this to cover all scopes, so one, two, and three. And for a company that continues to sell natural gas to our customers, that means, yes, that we include our sold products in that carbon neutrality. So just to give you a little bit of a taste of, of how stringent our ambition is and how um, transforming this journey is for us at NG. So can I, can I say to you what people sometimes say, how can a natural gas company or a company with a, a large chunk of gas in its mix possibly achieve this goal of decarbonizing by 2014? But having such a goal, it's just, it's, it's, just, it's just a dream, it's not possible. Well, how do you respond? Yeah, I, so I, I respond by saying that, first of all, it's a journey. It's going to take some time. We're going to have some intermediate milestones we're going to decarbonize our whole energy mix. We're going to increase our renewable generation by a lot. And on the gas side, of course, we are going to work both on switching our products, but also decarbonizing the gas. And for that, we have today solutions. So biomethane, for example, which is a reality here in France, which is a natural gas, but it is existing. So it's a little bit... Uh, carbon coming from a circular, circular economy, if you like, which is a great substitution to natural gas today. And then, of course, you know, looking a little bit forward to the potential of hydrogen, which remains a gas, very, very versatile, lots of potential, but is part of the solution as far as gas is concerned. So let's then, just look at those separately then, Catherine. Um, greening gas. So many experts say, you know, we should just turn our back on gas. It really does not have a place as a fuel of the future. What do you say to them? Why are you so committed to it still? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very committed to gas because it has a very specific propri properties and, and proper properties, sorry, it has very specific properties, including the ability to be stored, to be stored at scale to be stored for a long time and to offer something which is very precious these days, which is flexibility to the energy system. And that is extremely important because as you know, energy systems are getting transformed. You have the ramp up of renewable energy, which we obviously welcoming and we're very active in that. We, we like that, we, we engage, we're pushing for that. At the same time, it brings instability to the energy system. And the gas, because of its ability to be dispatched on a very short notice, to be stored, to be transported, high density in terms of uh, energy is a very important complement for the renewable energies, at least for the short term. And here I'm talking about natural gas. So gas as a vector is very important. So natural gas in the short term and then a greener gas in the longer term, in our mind, is extremely important to keep the energy system of the future robust, resilient, affordable. And here, I really want to insist on the affordability of this energy transition. It is so important, you know, every day is now power price reminds us, us that it is extremely important to think how we are going to transform this energy mix in an affordable manner. Otherwise, we will go through a wall. So, in my mind, really, that is, it's this flexibility that gas brings, 
steerability, dispatchability that makes it a very important component for this energy transition to remain affordable. Hydrogen has been getting a huge amount of attention, one might even say hype, over the last few years, but it's a long way from being commercially viable. What do you think it's going to take in terms of investments, in terms of um, technology development to make it really bankable and scalable? Yeah, and you're right, hydrogen is, is extremely exciting because it has this versatility, it is also a gas, so it has a role to play in, in this whole construction of the new energy system. Uh, it is also a very important solution to decarbonize some sectors where, frankly, solutions are not obvious. So very, very excited about the potential of hydrogen. Now, you've heard maybe the expression of the chicken and egg. You know, it comes to, OK, uh, how do you kickstart a hydrogen economy? And for this, you're right, a, a lot of stars need to be aligned. Uh, you need technology. You need uh, affordable, renewable energies, and especially when it comes to green hydrogen. So cheap, renewable electricity is very important. You need technology that also you know, needs to, to become more, more affordable. And then another aspect, which is around policy, uh, market design, incentive, potentially incentive to kickstart pilot projects, and then regulation, um, regulatory framework that gives private sectors the visibility that obviously we need in order to invest for the long term in, in projects like hydrogen. But I'm personally very excited about it. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, there is you know, a lot of excitement, but concrete actions are happening. Uh, so, yeah, let, let's, let's, watch, let's watch the space. And what about NG itself? You started our conversation by saying you have committed to decarbonize by 2045 and you yourself have to make sure that you strip out the emissions within your own business. What are you doing right now, not in 2045, but right now, this year, next year, the year after? to make sure that you're so, steadily making progress on those commitments? So, so we're investing massively in renewable energy. So we are developing a renewable electricity capacity. We have a very strong ambition. Today, we are operating roughly 32 gigawatts of renewable energy. We're going to be operating 50 gigawatts by 2025, and then 80 gigawatts by 2030. So just to give you a, an idea of the, of the scale of our ambition, we also have ambition in terms of green hydrogen production. By 2030, we want to have around four gigawatt of green hydrogen being produced. We also have ambition because you know we have a large infrastructure which we want to make sure we can reuse. And we feel that we can uh, adapt this infrastructure for hydrogen, whether it's storage or transportation. And so we have set ourselves also goals in terms of hydrogen storage and hydrogen transportation by 2030. Catherine McGregor, thank you so much for joining us to share out your plans on Climate Week NYC. Very nice to talk with you. See you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.